All right, so we talked about being able to go to the boss and talk to him about why you think you deserve more money. I'm going to talk today about tearing something down and the most efficient way to go about it so that you're not losing a bunch of time and, uh, and finding out things later on that you probably should have done a little sooner in the process. And this is tried over many, many years, and I found this works pretty well to make sure management is happy with the results they get and that there's not a backlog because of the way and order in which I, you know, took to make that repair happen. Okay. So one thing to note before we start with teardown is, are we on a fact-finding mission? So that means that if I am on a, on a fact-finding mission, then I'm going to do certain things differently, right? So I'm going to tear things down. I'm going to use a digital torque wrench or some means in a reverse torque to see what the braking torque is. There's other things that I have to consider when I'm taking things apart that if I'm trying to find out what's going on with said cylinder, I need to be taking the top end apart with uh, trying to find out is anything different about this cylinder. So that means that let's say you have uh, adjuster buttons, right? So you can count the threads on them and you can see if there's huge differences in the valve, maybe from a recent overhead or something like this. But, you know, the, the bolts on the injector hold down, you might want to know if those the breaking torque on those is the 50 foot pounds plus the 90 or what what is what is it right um and then from there you can extrapolate more and more information but this is if you're on a fact finding mission this takes more time so the, you'll notice that there's different parts of the repair and the tear down is the first part so if it's just an r and r job you know remove and reinstall that's going to be a much different approach that you take towards that than is than as if it was going to be something that we turn this heater off if it was going to be something where you want a fact finding mission. So we've already got that. So you're going to inspect all parts and bolts. You might think this is silly, but I'll tell you, your name is on it, right? So after it goes back together, no one cares that the bolt had a crack. They're going to blame it on you. <laughs> so don't you want to put it together in, in, in a way that makes it uh, kind of foolproof so no one can come back on you and say, well, you did such a crappy job or you stretched that bolt too far when you were installing it, torquing it. So, how do you do that? I use um, CRC electrical contact cleaner, QD electrical contact cleaner. Sorry for going out of frame. This stuff, if you spray this on something with a hairline fracture and blow on it, Mario Correa taught me this 20 years ago, it shows you a very fine line uh, that you cannot see all often with a naked eye. Very cool uh, trick. But you want to do that for your bolts and then look at them. I mean, remember, your name's going on this. And look, if you're reusing head bolts, which we know, you know, you can measure some of them and some specs are different than others. Use new, use old, whatever. Um, follow the manufacturer spec, but you want to make sure you're not installing a bolt, say an injector hold down, that when you go to torque, it's going to break off flush because, the, you know, the filler is already starting to stretch beyond where it should and there's a hairline fracture. I did this. I do this. I know it takes more time, guys, but do this in the beginning. Trust me, do it in the beginning, and that will save you trouble later on. Another thing you're going to do is you're going to prepare everything for assembly, and there's the same reason behind the bolt. You want to make sure if you're going to put a head on that your block and everything else is inspected. You don't want to just, you know, clean, up, clean it up really well. You want to inspect everything really, really well because that's the only time you're ever going to get that head off to see if those liners are starting to have cracks or if the head or block is showing kind of wear. So um, there are other things, too, though, that you want to look at. Uh, and as far as preparing them for assembly, a head is a good example. Because if you are, let's say that you had a problem to where you had a head gasket that was leaking and you chose not to send the head off, that's your choice and you're going to have to de deal with the repercussions. But at least inspect the thing. We, you know, get a magnifying glass. Do, do what has to be done to inspect it. It's good because... After you do it, they're going to blame you. Once the head comes off and you are the one to put it on, it's your fault. I don't care what happened. You should have told them you needed parts if you needed parts. And if you didn't, make sure you write it in your story so that you can cover your ass. So uh, verify parts are the right ones. If, you're not, if you didn't look them up yourself, and this is a big deal. Because at a dealer, you're going to get guys who are just trying to make commission on parts sold. And there's a give and take there. And they're trying to make their own rent at the back counter. What I noticed was that if I ordered my own parts and they were accurate, I could always get good parts and availability from the guy at the counter. And this is even if you're going to order parts at just a dealer. You want to make sure that you punch those part numbers in that you have ordered 
and that you get the part numbers. You also, I would just go with the dealer if you're going to buy them because they'll stand behind them for a warranty um, on certain parts, clearly. So it, make sure that happens before before you're just sitting around going, oh man, this is the wrong one. I, and then it, it becomes an issue because the service manager, if you're working in the service department, he doesn't care whose issue. He's looking at you. You're like an independent contractor to get that job out of the door. You should know by now. Make sure your parts are, are the right parts. Make sure when I did my own parts lookup, guys, I can use all of Kat's entire parts lookup system. Uh, I used um, Peterbilt's entire. I learned how to use those systems because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to be looked at and going, hey, every time you order parts, man, it's always dicked up. And then other people can't maybe sabotage you or keep you, hold you back either. And which is, you know, I won't even speak about that. So the, um, the parts cost and availability. You want to hit the customer right up front with this rather than in the end. You never hit the customer up in the end with the parts cost or with any other cost. You want to get the approval. You want to write it down. So I have parts cost and availability. We want to offer the customer options for freight. Maybe there's truck down um, type service where we can give him uh, expedited shipping. We want to do the best we can by the customer. And that's up to you uh, as a technician oftentimes to close that gap to make sure because you're the technical guy. You know, um, you know these things and you can give insights and that will make you more valuable. So then we, uh, we prep our parts and we, and we organize our tools and we assemble. Ask for the literature for the first time and make notes that you will put into a folder. The reason why I say make notes, because and you know you don't have to pull a book out every time, but if you made notes as to things, then you can also uh, specs will change. So use like backlash and all these other internal engine specifications for thrust, for a crank, or whatever. You know, make sure you're up to date with the specs because they often change. And I've discussed that in one of these other videos with an ISX and, and the gear train. So. Um, the last thing, obviously, is to verify your repair. I didn't put it on there because I, it needs to be talked about on its own. Guys, don't do it if you're not willing to verify it. Because in the end, it'll come back to haunt you. It always does. Run it through its paces every single time. As soon as you make a repair, there's no assumption that you just used your magic wand and it's done. You want to go and verify your repair. And so much of this whole entire field would be so much better off and more reputable if you would just check your own work. Check your work like you're checking someone else's work. Like you, you don't want, and the Marine Corps had this saying, like, you don't want to be one who, who's, who's messed up. Like the one on the skyline, you know, the one who's, who's poking out and the sore thumb. Well, that's the guy in, the, in management's eyes who always has comebacks. That's the guy. That's the sore thumb. Because he doesn't matter how good he is or fast if it all comes back. Right? Because he didn't tighten the bolts well enough. He didn't use the right uh, locking compounds or you know, um, bolt compounds to make sure that the, they're locked in place or lube things appropriately when assembling them. You know, if you start an engine dry, guys, I'm just going to tell you a lot of engine builders out there, go get a little tank, put oil in it and leave room when you put the oil, oil in so that you can close it. Right. And, um, and still have some air there. And then on the other side, they used to call this a pig. And you put a pig on an engine when you when you build it so that all the oil passages can get lubricated before you start it. A lot of guys use a lot of assembly lube and different things, but this is a really easy way to check for lubrication before you ever have to crank it. So you put this and you put it on like an oil pressure sensor, pull it out, put eighth inch pipe, run that pig, and then pressurize the tank. And it'll t dump all that oil through all the main ga uh, galleries. And um, you'll be able to see just how many uh, things that aren't getting lubricated, but you'll notice that it, there is a definite uh, hierarchy of needs when it comes to oil, oil and lubrication. Uh, and if there's big holes in some places, then you'll never get lube in some others. So uh, something to think about and have a good night.